So let's talk about the Superdale method of taking an exam. Now, these are just some tips I want to give you that I've experienced over the years of taking exams uh, that I'd like to share with you. I refer to it as the Superdale method. First of all, you need to know that your questions are going to be done with multiple choice. And when it comes to multiple choice, you'll typically see a radio button for your choice, which means you only have to select one, or you might see multiple choice, which may be a square or check like what we see here on these bullets. Now, if it's a straight up multiple choice, we know that we only have to pick one. You might see some questions that select that say select all that apply. And these are the ones that I don't like because you don't get partial credit. If you're supposed to, let's say if there's five in your answer and you're supposed to pick three and you only pick two, or you pick three but only two of them are right, you do not get partial credit. So one of the tricks that I've learned, and hopefully they haven't fixed it yet, is it's kind of a flaw. Look at this, I've hacked the exam. Now, um, it's kind of a flaw. If I get a question that has multiple checkboxes, I will go through and if the question says select all that apply, I'll go through and just immediately start checking as many boxes as I can. And what has happened in the past is that an error will pop up when you check one too many. And then I sit there and I go, wow, that happened on the fourth one, so I know I only need to select three. Yeah, see? The other method that I use is I read the answers first. Huh? Yeah, not only do I read the answers first, when I read the answers, I make sure that I understand each of the answers. I kind of go through my head what each of the answers mean. Then I go back and I read the question backwards. No, I don't go... No, I read the sentences, the last sentence first. Let me show you an example. Let's say that this was my question. First of all, I'm not going to look at the question. I'm going to look at the answers. And the answers are white hat, gray hat, black hat, and red hat. And in my mind, I think, okay, what's a white hat? White hat is a hacker that is good. Black hat, uh, that's a guy, it's a hacker that's bad. Gray hat, that's a guy who's, depending on the day or who's paying him. A red hat, hmm, I've never heard of a red hat. Many times your answers, one of the answers will be completely wrong. And in the case, there is no such thing as a red hat. So I can immediately cross red hat off. Now I'm going to read my question. And I'm going to read it from the end first. What type of hacker am I? Okay, that makes sense. And the reason why I say to read the question backwards is because many times the questions might start off with, Julie has a blue mouse pad and she likes long walks on the beach. A ton of information at the very beginning of the question that means nothing. And it's not until the last sentence that you figure out exactly what it is they're looking for in the answer. So they want to know what type of hacker am I? Okay, let's back up. If you've been contracted to perform an attack against a target system, what type of hacker are you? Now, don't read into this. As an example, contracted, don't go, well, contracted by who? Is somebody evil? Because that could be a black hat. No, contracted. This would be legit. I'm going to go with a white hat. Hopefully that makes sense to you. The, the other thing I do, too, is that in the exam environment, as I told you before, you have 125 questions. You have to get 70% correct. Well, that equates down to about 90 questions is what you need correct. In the upper left-hand corner of the exam, there is a box that says mark for review. Now, what I do is when I get to a question that I may not quite understand or I may be a little confused by what they're trying to get across, I'll mark it for review and I'll go on. Because at the end, when you get to the end, it'll say, hey, we noticed that you have some questions marked for review. Do you want to go back and look at those? And it shows me this big list of the ones that I have marked for review. If I only see six questions that are set up for marked for review, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Because I can miss 30% of my questions, which is, a, is right around 30, depending on the weight. So I'm feeling really comfortable. If I see 70 questions marked for review... I didn't study good enough. The other tip that I do too is, is if I've got a question that's really long and I'm, I've done everything else and I've got just this one left, I will go to that question and the time can expire and it won't kick you out of that question. You have all the time in the world that you want, not that I need to be there more than four hours, but if I really want to work through it, I can. 
Once I select the qu the answer and hit next, the exam finishes immediately.